Michelle Kostuzic, Inside Sales Manager at Detroit Reading Products. So Michelle, tell me, how does your team become a resource when our team has questions based upon our first question to our customer? What's the environment? Where is this going? How much clearance to combustibles and things like that? Things that we need to find out. If we have questions on application and design, where do we go? So that's a really good question, and that's commonly what I like to start with is asking, well, what type of application are we dealing with? Are we dealing with a residential patio, or are we dealing with a commercial industrial patio space for a restaurant? Then I like to try to ask, okay, well, are we dealing with gas fired or electric only? Because there's often times that gas isn't available, so they only have electric as an option. That narrows down that product offering. Okay. Um, then I also ask about aesthetics because patios and uh, restaurants, they all have their own look and feel, and they want mm -hmm. something that's gonna blend into the space, not necessarily stand out. Right. So I try to, if they don't know what they want, they can do gas or electric. I try to show them what those different products look like and say, well, what looks good to you? And then we'll see if we can make that product work for your application. So if I have a salesperson who knows the product that they, that they want based on what they've learned, and we've gone through those paces, so design, more so the application, is your team also available if we have technical questions on kind of where it's going? Does the, is this going to work if I, if I spec it in here? How, how would your team help with that? So to expand on the questions that we would ask, we want to know, well, what type of ceiling height are we working with? Floor to that awning mm -hmm. or floor to that tapered ceiling. We need to know what is the ceiling made of? How wide is your space? How long is your space? Um, sometimes people will know how their space is already going to be set up with tables. Sometimes it could be a variety of different things that they set up. At a residential application, they could have couches here or a fireplace over here. So knowing as much as we can, since we're not there at that site, mm -hmm. we want to ask all the questions that have that big picture in our mind of what they're setting up so we can help either agree with the product that they've selected or offer an alternate solution that might work better based off of what their expectations are. Um, expectations is a really key factor in here because some restaurants or uh, residential customers, they may think that they're going to have heaters that will operate all winter long and they'll be comfortable out there, but that's not always going to be the case. The <laughs> no. I mean, you, you can have some of those expectations in place that they may say, well, we just want to take the chill off. We're okay if we're going to have coats outside mm -hmm. still. Um, or if it's a restaurant, they might put wind barriers or something of that nature that will help make it feel a little bit more comfortable um, in those longer months. So making sure that the customer knows what to expect with the product, with it being an outdoor application, that there's only so much that you can do with heating outside, and then we can help tell them whether this product will work okay or not. Right. Um, there is one other big factor that comes into play is something called clearances. Mm -hmm. So the clearances to combustibles, it's material that can obviously combust or that's around that product, but things that people don't think of. Picnic tables, are they using high top tables or high top chairs, or are they all low tables? Um, are there couches over there? Are there fans up in the ceiling or sprinkler heads? That's another big one. So even though certain things may not be combustible, like people, we're not combustible. Right. If we get too hot, we're gonna move. The whole point is making sure that they understand in a real life situation, just because the heater looks good somewhere, doesn't mean it can fit with the clearances the right around the space. So I try to replicate showing an elevation view of that product that they want mm -hmm. in their application with the clearance window around that heater so they can see, okay, well, yeah, the clearance window is five feet below the heater, but that really only gives me maybe two feet off the ground for anything combustible. Will that work for me? Yes or no. Right. So it's setting that stage of narrowing down the product based off of aesthetics, based off of price, based off of size, mm -hmm. based off of electrical or gas, and then seeing if it'll work for their application before we can go ahead and say, all right, well, how many heaters should I use? Right. Where is the exact placement? Because the goal with the placement of heaters is to not put it directly over top of where somebody's going to be at. Because if they're forced to sit there, then they're going to be uncomfortable and they're going to not want to come back or sit over there or they might complain. So having it go mostly like in aisleways, in between tables, something that kind of gives a little bit of throw in different directions, mm -hmm will help make a, a better solution for those customers in the end, end result. Well, there's lots to consider then. Well, we're so happy to have you as, as part of, of uh, a resource for our team. And we're so happy to be partnering with you and your company at Detroit Radiant. And so just look forward to a great partnership and uh, we'll be working with you. 
Sounds great. I look forward to it as well, Kevin. Thank you.